So in the first foundation, the benefit or the hallmark is achievement of stability and vividness or pliancy. In the second, you have response flexibility. In the third, you have metacognitive awareness. And in the <coughs> fourth, you have what today we're calling these days metacognitive insight, or you can just say insight, which is there's some recognition about the nature of things that are arising in your mind. So normally when things arise in your mind, you treat them as if they are the literature right now, like the, uh, the mindfulness-based cognitive therapists are calling these real outputs of reality. So the story comes up in your mind, and you treat that story as if it's a real output of reality that you must respond to. If you're anything like me, if someone said something nasty or whatever, and you, you have a long car ride, and you're stewing and brewing, you're kind of like working it out in your head, you know what I mean? And so you're responding to that as if it's a concrete, real reality. And, and your body is coming along for the ride, right? It's starting to get huffy and puffy. Right? So the moment of recognition that this is impermanent, it doesn't have any substantiality. It's a construction. That is a deep moment of insight. So that would be a byproduct of the fourth foundation. The kind of rec what, you, what you are recognizing or you are re recognizing the actual nature of the phenomenon that's arising in your current experience. And that doesn't mean just thoughts. You can have the actualization of the impermanence of a sensation. You can see that the body posture is also impermanent. The sensation of unpleasantness is also impermanent. The state of mind is impermanent. And if that dawned on you, the, the nature of it to be impermanent, that would be a insight. That would be a profound insight, actually. Seeing that it's impermanent, seeing that it lacks substantiality, seeing that its course could only contribute to your own suffering, these are all, these are considered the three hallmarks, three characteristics of phenomenon. Should I repeat them? It doesn't matter what frame of reference, the object itself in the first foundation will be your body and the breath. In the second foundation, it will be sensations occurring in the present moment. In the third foundation, it will be your mental attitude or mental state. In the fourth foundation, it will be all of experience, the totality of the experience coming to bear. There will be a recognition of what are called the three characteristics, that things lack permanence, they're impermanent. Why, do they, why are they impermanent? They lack substantiality. They're insubstantial. And pursuing them as if they are permanent and substantial leads to suffering. So these are the three qualities. So I don't know what that actually looks like for you. Maybe you have an addiction history. Maybe somebody hurt you. You feel angry. You're observing the anger arising. You're uh, resisting the urge to react to the anger, but the thought arises, it would be, I really want to drink. You can see all of this happening in your mind, and you have the presence of mind to choose not to let that carry you into activity. You're, you're neither able to ar uh, as, uh, arrest it. It's not like you can just short-circuit the karmic momentum or charge that it carries but you're also not following it and uh, amplifying it or magnifying it, giving it credence, giving it weight, uh, legitimizing it. And then it dawns on you, there is a recognition that this, 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 is, this is my samsara making apparatus. This leads, to more, uh, this leads to more pain for me, pain and suffering. This is not helpful. So that insight is the recognition of dukkha. First Noble Truth. Now, if you could also have the experience of like, I am free of this. This is arising, but I don't need to make that call. I don't need to stop at the bar. And, and people that are in recovery know that there's a big difference. Where they have to white knuckle their, their urges, and the day comes when they don't have to white knuckle their urges. Do you follow? There, there comes a day where there is a cessation of that. 
And with that comes the presence of mind or the recognition that there is a cessation. Third noble truth. Maybe there's no day where there's no more urge, but there is confidence. I don't have to respond to it. Or the urge doesn't create more vibration or a luring sense in the mind. It doesn't snare you. You don't become preoccupied. It comes up and it passes. And there's a recognition. There's a sense of freedom here. There's a shoulder bent here. There's a pain signal here. There is a sense of freedom here. That's the recognition. 